Okay, hello friends, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're not gonna be making cold processed soap, but before you click off, don't worry. We're gonna be making something very fun and very um, educational, I guess you could say, because this is something that you guys can do if you want at home, and I highly recommend you do. I currently don't sell this on my website, but am working on getting it ready as soon as possible. I just need a little bit more time. I need to kind of um, perfect a few details and then I can have it listed. So be on the lookout. It will be available probably within the next few weeks. Um, and I think it's something you guys are really, really going to love. Okay, so this is what we are kind of calling, um, and by we I mean me and my family members who have been using it for so long and just love it so much. We're kind of calling it a body butter um, because it is so moisturizing and just, it's amazing. It's, it's like a face cream, hand cream, um, whatever you want to call it. Like I use it every day and I know a lot of people who also use it every day and just swear by it. So we're going to do that. The first thing I'm going to do... I'm actually going to measure out the arrowroot powder. I'm going to do this is not actually done with the scale. This is done a cup at a time. So I'm going to measure that out just so that I cannot have to clean the coconut oil out of the cup. So I'm going to put this to the side because we're going to use that later. Um, and now I'm going to measure out the coconut oil. Now, my coconut oil is a little bit soft because it's very hot. I don't know if you guys have noticed, we have some uh, record heat going around the country. So, um, huh, even here in Wyoming, we've been kind of feeling, feeling the effects. So, um, it's going to be tricky. Usually I scoop this out, but since it's melted... I'm thinking I'm going to try to pour it, um, but it's tricky because, you know, I don't want to make a mess, so we're going to pour it out. Um, I have not quite, like I said, perfected this recipe in the sense that, um, yes, I use it every day, but every time I make the recipe, I'm not quite sure how it's going to turn out because I don't quite remember each time what I did the last time to make it perfect, and so sometimes it's not completely perfect. Um, but we're going to kind of hope that this time it turns out to be perfect. You guys will know what I mean once it's actually done. And I'm also going to be making an oil that I also use on my face, but that oil is... Um, the recipe for that can actually be found at Brambleberry. And when we get to that, um, I'll go over that. Because I just want to go ahead and make both in one video. They're not like super complicated. So, okay, I need to get a tablespoon. Okay, I'd like to apologize. I know I have not done a soap video in a while. I, it's been literally almost two weeks. Um... <laughs> And that was never the intention. Uh, I have some ideas um, for some soaps, but I have to wait until I can get specific molds. I want to do them perfect. And there's a few embeds that I want to do. Um, and I don't have the molds to do those yet. So, okay. So we've got beeswax and coconut oil. And we're going to go ahead and put this... We're going to move this into the kitchen. So move you guys into the kitchen. Okay, perfect. I think you guys should be able to see perfectly. Um, okay, now let me just turn it up a little bit so it can get hotter. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this to melt. The beeswax takes a lot longer than everything else to melt. So you want to kind of melt that first. Um, let me get a spoon. Okay, so the beeswax takes a little bit longer to melt, so we're going to do that first. Let's see if you guys can really see. Um, 
as hot as it is in the house, I feel like it's not going to take as long as it normally does. But um, what you want to do is really, really get that beeswax good and melted. Um, and then you can move on to the next step. So we're going to go ahead and leave this here. And we're going to go ahead and measure out our other ingredients while we're waiting. Okay. So the next ingredient we're going to need is shea butter. Now, you can put the shea butter in the same container as the arrowroot, but I'm going to just go ahead and scoop it into this cup that I use for the coconut oil. The shea butter is not completely melted. It's more of a solid, a solid oil, as you guys can see. It's not like the coconut oil, so it's not melted. And that kind of gives you a little bit of a firmer recipe anyway. But the shea butter, you don't want to melt it too much because it can become grainy. So that's why I'm not putting it directly in with the coconut oil and the beeswax. Um, we're going to wait and do it later. Okay, don't worry that I'm not wearing gloves because this is actually just stuff that I'm making for myself and my family. When we do the actual sales, it'll be a completely different process. I highly recommend if you're going to sell anything that you wear gloves and protective equipment and hair nets, things like that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead. I guess you guys can kind of see how much. Um, this is obviously one cup. <laughs> so that's kind of what we're going with. One cup sort of equal portions, I guess, um, of everything. This shea butter, by the way, I get on Amazon. It's a really good shea butter. It's what I use in my lip balms and also what I use in like everything else. Okay, so we've got our shea butter measured out. We've got our uh, arrowroot powder. Now we're gonna measure out our zinc oxide, which is a powder, so we can put it directly in here. And so we need two, roughly two tablespoons. Um, try not to get this, like breed this in. Um, it's not super safe when it's in a powder form because it is like a mineral. You don't want to go breathing in minerals. Okay, so now I've got two tablespoons of zinc oxide. Now we need rosemary antioxidant okay now i'm gonna wait and put that in um it, i'm actually gonna put that and the essential oil directly into the coconut oil that is currently melting so everything is melted here let's go back into the kitchen and check on that coconut oil i think you can kind of see a little bit it is not completely melted but we're getting there Okay, so while we're waiting on this to melt, we're just going to keep stirring it a little bit. It just takes a, just takes, I think it has to be like 145 or something before it melts. I can't remember the exact melting point of beeswax, but pretty hot. Um, so this is rosemary antioxidant. I got this from, um, I think it's called Bulk Naturals. Um, and that's where I get it. And it is a bit messy, as you can see, you get a little on your finger so that's one of the reasons I recommend wearing gloves and we're gonna do about 20 drops yeah so a little bit more I do about 25 drops in that just now now rosemary antioxidant I can't tell you a whole lot about it as far as what it does um, I know that it's good for the skin because um, I've been using it it's a lot like vitamin E it's kind of a cheaper um, version of vitamin E. Vitamin E is a preservative, a natural preservative, and a rosemary antioxidant just takes the place of that if you don't want to do vitamin E, um, pretty much. So that's kind of why we're going with the rosemary extract or rosemary antioxidant. So now we just have to wait until this is good and melted and we'll come back and, uh, yeah, we'll come back and we'll finish up the process. Okay, it looks like our um, coconut oil or our beeswax has just about melted all the way. So we're going to go ahead and add our shea butter. 
and be careful when you do this so that it does not splash. Um, scrape all that out and we'll give this a few minutes to melt. And then we can go ahead and add our arrowroot and our zinc oxide. Our arrowroot and our zinc oxide don't really need a lot of time. Um, just like a few minutes to kind of not be, you know, grainy, like powdery. Because um, arrowroot is basically cornstarch in a way. Except instead of corn, it's made with um, it's arrowroot, arrowroot powder. So I'm going to go ahead while this is melting and go start measuring out the ingredients for my other recipe and that way once I pour it I can just go ahead and do the same thing all over again. So we're going to let this melt. Shouldn't take very long and then we'll add the final ingredients and be ready to go. Okay we're getting there. I just got those few little chunks as you can see they're floating and we're going to fully melt those fully mix everything so that it's all kind of good and mixed up and incorporated together. You don't have to use an emulsifier. There's no water in this recipe. You don't have to use um, an actual preservative. The, the rosemary, rosemary antioxidant gives it a little bit of a preservative, but you don't have to have anything since it's not water. It's just oils. Um, since there's no water, there's really not really much of a threat of bacteria. Um, you know, and you'll use it up so fast it won't even matter. Okay, so now that that's good and melted, I am just stirring up my zinc oxide and my arrowroot a little bit to mix them. And what I'm going to do is do one scoop at a time. This is tricky because I'm not left-handed, so um, stirring. Plus, I don't know if you guys can see. Now, you can put liquid in, like, make it like a roux. I don't know if you guys do any cooking, but um, if you do a roux, you do the liquid in the powder and then kind of melt the powder before you put it in the really hot container. And then it kind of kind of makes it good and smooth, but it'll melt good enough on its own. I'm not super worried about it. We're just doing like a couple scoops at a time. Um, and it should be good. It, it, it's going to melt. You just kind of got to stir it a little more to kind of really combine those ingredients. And if it's good and hot, which it is, I'm actually going to turn it down a little bit because I don't want it to boil over. Normally, I actually use a much smaller pot, but this is the first time I've had this big pot available and not um, full of stuff. <laughs> so I've decided, hey, I'm going to take advantage and use it while I can because it's a much better pot. It got, holds a lot more water. And as you can see, or maybe you can't see, the water line has to be above or at least at the same level of the ingredients that you're mixing. Um, or otherwise, you're not going to get heat at the top. Um, if there's no water around it, it's going to be harder to melt anything at the top. So that's why I do the beeswax to it first because then it stays way low and it melts a lot easier. If you try to put everything all in at once, then the ingredients come up above the water line and that's a problem because it just takes a little longer to melt. I've done it and it does, it does melt eventually, but it's not as fun. Um... Right, I'm having trouble here. Okay, get in there. Okay, the water is going to get a little bit of the powder, but don't worry. That's why we just use sink water to melt the boiler. You don't have to use anything fancy. It's just literally to boil everything. So we're going to combine this. And then we're kind of going to let it get up to a nice, not 
not hot. I mean, it already is hot, but we're going to kind of just let all the ingredients be the same temperature by mixing them for a couple minutes like this. Um, and then we can take them off. And as you can see, there's, I mean, I don't know if you can see it actually at all, but the powder is, um, all this white stuff right here is the zinc oxide. It tends to be a little, um, hard to mix it kind of settles at the bottom but that's that's okay because I'll show you what to do once um, we get to that step okay so everything's good and mixed I'm just gonna keep mixing for a little bit to kind of just make sure that everything is kind of the same temperature and then we're gonna remove it from the heat and move back into our other room okay it seems like everything is good um, Leave it for a few more minutes if you really want to kind of cook off that arrowroot. Um, sort of the same as if you're doing like flour. Um, you're kind of cooking it off by letting it good get good and hot so that it doesn't... Uh, well, in the case of what I'm talking about, flour, biscuits, and gravy, you're cooking off the flour flavor. But you're not going to eat this stuff. But you still don't want it to just be like powdery and grainy like arrowroot. Um, so you want to kind of give it... Give it a nice stir. But like I said, that um, shea butter will get grainy, so we're not going to leave it too long so that it gets grainy. It's been a few minutes. Everything's combined. Um, so I'm going to take it off the heat, and we're going to go into the other room. So I need to let this cool for a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and just um, pause the video, and I'm going to turn the fan on to give that... A little bit of a cool down because it's a little bit hot and while you can pour it when it's hot it's 161 you can pour it when it's hot it won't do anything but I find that the oils tend to separate and also I don't know how hot this plastic can get so I'm gonna just turn on the fan for a minute and uh, go ahead and let this cool. Okay, we've got it down to about 145. Added our essential oils. I highly recommend waiting for it to cool off enough so that they won't just immediately burn off. Um, but this one is going to be orange. So I'm. you can let it cool more than 145. The thing is, I have to um, make another batch and I need this container. So I really just can't wait any longer. So I'm just going to check and see how much to kind of fill it up. Okay, so we're going to say about 7 ounces. That's generally how that works when you have an 8 ounce container. It doesn't really hold 8 ounces. Um, so that's like 7 and a quarter. So let's try to see if we can do how much more. Okay, that's about seven. Um, perfect. I'm just set this to the side. And then we have one more, which is going to be a used jar. Don't let that offend your senses. Um, you know, like I said, this is going to my mother. This is a jar she used and she doesn't care if we um, do that. Okay, we need to go a little bit more so that it's not... So it's like seven and a half, I'm gonna say. About seven and a half. Okay, so now what you can see here is what I'm gonna show you. Um, is this is all of the zinc oxide and the zinc oxide really doesn't incorporate doesn't really mix too well so that's okay because we're going to kind of take it and scrape a little bit a lot of it does this is just the extra if you have too much in a recipe which is probably the problem is that it's just too much um, so probably reduce it down to I'd say a tablespoon per recipe and we'll be fine. Um, but so this is about five ounces here. And these are almost like seven and a half. We're going to put these off to the side. And we're going to let them cool. Almost 
completely and then we'll come back to those in a little bit in the meantime i'm going to go ahead and make a another batch with this time in peppermint and since you guys have already seen it um i'm not going to do it on camera but we're going to come back just wait around because we're going to do the face oil in just a minute okay so really quickly um this have been sitting here um for a while and you can see that they're sort of getting a little more firm they're not really moving around um these look okay um but like as you can see in this one or maybe you can see it but there's a little bit of separation of the oils and so what i like to do is wait till it's completely cooled off and then you can see that it's still super soft i just like to give it a really good stir um just to kind of recombine any kind of separated oils. This one didn't do it too bad. And so I think that means we got the recipe perfect this time. Um, Cause like I said, sometimes I can't remember in the order in which I melted stuff. Um, but I think that this worked out perfectly. Um, so we're gonna mix this. And then as long as it's completely cooled, it will not separate again. Um, so, but it's not been sitting long enough to where it's completely hard. Now, once these are done, I like to let them cure for about a week. Um, and I will tell you why, because you can use this as is. This is perfect just the way it is. Um, and it'll be a perfectly good soft body butter. But if you want to really give it time to kind of firm up, um, so that it's not so liquidy, which I prefer it to just not be as liquidy. Um, and then, so after about a week, this will be done and it'll be good and firm and ready for shipping and everything else. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing with these. These are my peppermint ones um, and they're a little bit fuller. And so I'm just going to stir them. And I don't know if you can see, but they're, the top smooths out immediately. Um, so that's why you got to do it when it's completely cooled, but not before it's had time to cure. You don't want to like wait a week and then try to stir it because you literally won't be able to stir it because <laughs> it'll be hard. Um, so yeah, you can see a little better the separation here it's it's really not much in the way of separation this time and that's because we got it melted in the right order everything was done at the right temperature and it was poured properly so that's why you know you kind of just want to do it the way I did it I guess you could say and you just kind of want to mix up because otherwise you'll get like a little bit of a white foam on top and that is from the arrowroot and from the zinc oxide and see how it that does that there so you just want to kind of mix that back in and it's perfect it'll be perfect in a few days it'll be good and hard and if you want to ship it you can like I said you can use it immediately um, and since it'll take several days for the customer to get it oh I made a mess um, that'll give it time to cure while it's traveling but I just like to let it cure while it's sitting on the table, flat, you know, because as you can see, it's still very liquidy. But by tomorrow, and then if even a few days out, it'll be firmed up a lot better. So I'm going to let these cure overnight, and then tomorrow I'll put the lids on. Got these nice little black lids here, and uh, we'll get labels and everything, and we'll be good to go. Okay, now that we've got our face body butter um mixed up and ready to go in the kitchen i'm gonna go ahead and mix up our um face oil uh i think it's called if you go to brambleberry and i'll try to link it um it's called hemp cbd and hemp face oil project i think i'll try to put a link in the description but i'm not 100 percent sure that i that's what it's called so um what we're gonna do is there's four oils now I don't use CBD in mine but you can it's completely optional 
Um, but what we do have is borage oil. This one's almost empty. That's why I have it. Um, squalene oil from Brambleberry. Uh, sunflower seed oil. This is not the container it came in. And hemp seed oil. But we've got these jars here. Um, and this is about a two ounce jar. And it holds, I'd say, about an ounce and a half. Ounce and three quarters. Um, and obviously you do not want to overfill it. Okay, so we're going to do, okay, so we're going to start with the borage oil. We're going to do an ounce of borage. Maybe I should do like a half an ounce of borage because that'll make it more. Yeah, I'm, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a half an ounce. Like I said, this isn't a very specific um sort of recipe so i'm going to do a half an ounce of borage let's do we're going to tear that out do half an ounce of or roughly half an ounce um it's a little bit more it doesn't have to be perfect half an ounce of sunflower seed oil and then we're going to do a full ounce of the hemp seed and then we're going to do um, an entire ounce of squalene oil. Okay. And now there we go. So we have an ounce plus one ounce plus one ounce. So we've got three ounces total. Yeah, that should be about perfect. I, I just want two bottles, which is why I'm trying to figure out in my head how much to do. So for this particular one, I'm going to make it in a orange oh we also need a little bit of vitamin e um and not a lot of vitamin e just a couple of drops i'm just using this as an actual preservative um this does not get called for in the recipe but it i found that the essential oils sometimes can get a little rancid in in this particular recipe if you let it sit for too long which we never do we always use it up really quickly but um, you know, just to kind of give it a little bit of preservative. So this one I'm using actually ginger essential oil and key lime essential oil. So this is our ginger and key lime. Um, but the essential oils, you can decide what you want to do. You can add tea tree. Um, I actually am going to add a couple drops of tea tree. Tea tree is super good for the skin. So I'm gonna just go ahead and add a couple drops of that. Do peppermint, you can do most anything you want. Um, so there you go, there you have it. This is our finished recipe. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this stuff out of the way, um, cause I don't need it anymore. And then we're gonna go ahead and get our little things and fill up our bottles. Okay, so for our bottles, we've got our little um, funnel here. Now, you can do this on a scale and you can weigh it. I already know how much I need, so I'm not super worried about that. I am, however, going to give this a nice good stir with just a popsicle stick so that everything is good and combined. Smell it to make sure it's got enough essential oils. It smells delicious. That ginger key lime is really my favorite combination. Now, with the ginger key lime, you can't smell the tea tree, so don't worry about that because you're just adding a couple drops, but tea tree is really good for the skin, especially if you have like acne and stuff like that, which I do. Um, so definitely something I recommend, as long as you're not allergic to or anything, just make sure you're being safe. Make sure you check eocalc.net or .com. I'll try to link that as well. Um, I've already done all that before. So I've made this recipe many, many times, so I don't need to double check everything. I know how much is safe for all my ingredients, but, you know, just make sure if you're making it for the first time that you're checking everything to make sure you're being safe. Okay, I'm going to just set this over here, and then I'm going to go ahead and pour. you got to be careful because it will overflow very quickly, so... Just make sure that you're not um, pouring too fast. And I want to stop at about three quarters of the way and then fill up the other one 
just to make sure I have enough to fill both sort of evenly. Ooh, see that it goes over. If there's like suction and there's no air coming out of the bottom, it'll overflow at the top. So you gotta kinda go slow. It's getting pretty full now, so I think just to keep it even, we're gonna put this back over here for a little bit more. Okay. See, it fills up because there's like suction on the bottom and there's no air. Okay. Um, there you go. And then you just kind of scrape out those last beautiful little ingredients. It is not a clear oil. Uh, I can tell you that I use it at night. My mom uses it in the morning. Um, sometimes I use it in the morning if I just need that little extra moisture. Um, because honestly, it's really amazing. And as dry as it has been lately, uh, you just need you just need a little extra moisture. So then it comes with this little dropper, and you just close that on, and there you go. And I don't know if you guys can see how much is in the bottle. It's about this much. Um, definitely weigh it if you're going to sell it. I'm not going to sell these currently. I am going to try to sell the body butters um, within the next few weeks. So be on the lookout for those. Um, but otherwise, um, you can make this at brambleberry.com. If you want me to make these, please just leave a comment down below. I can consider putting them on the website, but it'll have to be if I get enough interest in the actual product itself. So just let me know what you think. Um, you can do that by giving the video a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel. Please share this video with anybody you know. I'm trying to reach 1,000 subscribers. I want to do a giveaway when I do reach 1,000 subscribers. And I want to do some fun things, so help me out by sending these videos to people you know who would love to watch them. Um, and yeah, and otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!